podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, man. And I'm in here with Pimpin' Ken. Bow, bow, Mike Fresh in this thing, man. Emerald Envy. Hey, it's your boy, Ville Boy Cass. That was not what I was really trying to hear. I'm in here with HHF. HHF. Go, nigga. Y'all niggas ain't. Y'all don't even know, man. Yeah, we slow motion like the Bible every knows. time, man. And whenever hey. y'all come, I hey. know you know hey. like that, you know. And family, <laughs> and, and I love what you do, man. Man, shout out to you, man, because you always try. And every time I see you bring people together, man, it's just hard for me. I told you the best episode, and I don't never even plug no niggas in because I don't know them niggas. But off the porch down there, when you put all those black faces on that porch, mm -hmm. that messed my head up because I never seen nobody. That's the hardest episode they ever done. Because they said that. No, I don't know them, but I know they, they I seen it. Mm -hmm. So it was hard, and I just want to commend you for bringing black people together and trying to do it not only in Texas, but just all over the world, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Boy, this shit got serious fast. Y'all like, this nigga good. Damn, he good. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. You know, yeah. I, I think that's what make it, make you know, make the show, you know. Like, man, so we here with Mike Fresh, man. You've been on Boss Talk 101 numerous of times. Um, you family over here. You already sure. know that. Like, I call you, I give you hell all the time about different stuff. How did you end up linking with HHF, bro? Man, um, so my boy Cash right here, he invited Pimpin' Ken to one of my shows. So this one of my shows is it's a crazy first impression. You meet me at one of my shows, you ain't, you gonna you stuck with me. So that's basically what just happened, you know what I'm saying? He Pippa Ken came to one of my shows. He was trying to figure out where I've been all his life, basically. Wow, so did you take the top off chain off? I'm not trying to be messy, but like you still top off yeah, as well. Sure right? I'm you, my people. You, 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 you know, that's that's just, that was who you always been with. But I noticed, even when I talked to Half Pint just a few days ago, he'll be here in a few days too. Yeah. Um, it was like, you know, they still do it, but it's just not, you remember, because at not, one time it was like a movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. We try to bring everybody together. But now it's kind of like everybody doing their own thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what it is. But love for all that. I talked to Pusha Man today. For sure. Everybody out over there. But man, just good to see you with. So what did Ken? How, what did, what made your final decision? Like I want to be with HHF. I want to rock with them. For sure. Want to sign with them. I want to be with that group. Yeah. Nah. He was just telling me when he found out that I didn't have no manager. He, you know, he, he gave me a management offer. So he said he wanted to help me out. Like man, you doing this by yourself? Like what's going on? So. Wow, that's hard, man. So what did you see in him that made you, uh, again, uh, to feel like, okay, he should be a part of the whole, you well, know, well, the HHL? Fir the first time that I went to a club and it wasn't all about me. It's always like, hey, you know who you with? Yeah, who all with Ken? So they said, who with Mike Fresh? I had to raise my hand. I said, I with him. And they said, okay, you with Mike Fresh? Come on, stand over here. So I was, I was just good to, you know, I mean, I'm a type of person, I'm a humble person. If you ain't humble, you'll crumble, you know? Sometimes your ego could be your worst amigo. You feel what I'm saying? So in my situation, I tried to co-mingle and try to cohabitate with people and still remain my normalcy, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm coming as a normal person, Cash, of course, invited me. He said, man, you gotta check this dude out, check this dude out. So we seen all these cars, who was these cars for? He said, if it ain't another club, they all here for Mike Fresh. I said, look, dog, got it popping there, huh? Yeah. And then so when, uh, you know, they said, Mike Fresh, Mike Fresh, Mike Fresh, everybody was, just, even in the interview when I was uh, having to do a drop for the HHF Awards, they was just, Mike Fresh, Mike Fresh, Mike Fresh. And so we went in, that's when the real, demonstration kind of, all the little kids were there for like it was a team party so it was like from 18 to 25 so everybody was like just Mike Fresh they was all the girls was running jumping on them and stuff and like that and so we got on the stage and he put his song on my main bitch be the bitch up and everybody was singing the word for word and you know I said I, at the first day I'm saying I want to interview you, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking views, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I need, I need that, right? <laughs> All right? So I'm thinking views, and then we actually did the interview at his house and come to find out he didn't have no management. Now, wow. you know me, I'm always an executive looking for artists. He's an artist looking for an executive. So it was a marriage made in heaven. You know, I said, wow, man. Then I got to looking at all his body of work and all the songs that he featured on and the songs that he had and looked at all the TikTok action that he had. And I seen the 16 billion streams. You know, immediately I said, man, if you come to Atlanta, 
I'm going to plug you up. And that's when we did a media run. We went to all the major podcasts. And then I said, man, I'm going to call my man E up in uh, Dallas. We going to Dallas or Street Life, all the rest of them, you know, and contact all these media people all in New York, all over the world. Because what I seen in him was that he was a talented young man. You know, he had great skills, but he didn't have the visuals, you know, you need the optics. So what I can do for him and what I've done for many of people from Pimp C to Boosie and all of them is I can provide the optics, you know, and I can connect him with the people that he need to be connected with. Cause me and you both know that this business is all about relationships. Definitely you know what I'm saying? Me. So I have the relationships. I don't care how talented you is, how much money you got. I have dudes that I met that had keys on top of keys, you know, hundreds and hundreds and millions of dollars and tried to buy the rap game. You can't buy this game. This game is based on relationships. So I said, man, I got the relationships. You got the talent. Let's go. Wow. Man, so, hey, man, what's going on with you over here, man? You was here before as well. What have you been doing since you was here? Man, I have been traveling the world. I started uh, touring with Mike Fresh and Bon and Matt. And uh, we went around the world, and I got to see it firsthand. So I was trying to figure out, it's kind of hard to get Ken to pay attention when we ain't in the same city. So since we was in the same city, I had hit fresh up. Um, I got a new project coming out. I'm still pushing brick by brick. It's going crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? That's we hard. 150,000 plus streams, you know. You know, I'm coming to you next. Like, what? What? how did you end up, um, you know, linking up with uh, Pim and Ken and HHF and just the whole movement? Well, uh, originally I was on the uh, Ugly Money podcast. Okay, okay. Yeah, the uh, Nietzsche. Shout out. Had, yeah, shout, shout out to Ugly to Money. Nietzsche. Ugly Money Nietzsche. He invited me to come to his podcast. He just was like, when he met me, he was like, you smart. You smart as hell. So he was just like, yeah, I need you on a podcast. And I came and Ken was speaking and shit. And I met him there. But, uh, yeah, I ended up meeting you somewhere else. You, I invited you to the uh, to the yeah, HHF well, awards. Yeah, I mean HHF invited meeting for the HHF meeting, the HHF awards and stuff. And so we chopped it up and basically like the same thing with Mike. Like I ain't got management and stuff, and I kind of just been doing it by myself for a long time. And I'm just real passionate about it. So he saw something in me. Wow, I like that, man. You know, it's big when you can get with, no, with, she, with hey, the people. I, I, and I'm sure, no, but let me show, uh, uh, do do the singing first. Just give give the people out there in the world a little dose of your singing. Acapella. Uh, Acapella. Love you lied to me. Said you'd always be around. Love you died to me. Left my chest vacant, no sound. You ripped out my heart. You tear me apart. You sticks and your stones are breaking my bones. But it's sickening to say you won't leave me alone. And do some rapping. Do some Man, rapping. Come on, do that. Take the rap out. This is the song. Hey, yeah, do the song. You won't leave me alone. Bro, she sound good, don't she? Now, but here's the song that caught my attention. Give them that song. Go hard, body on that shit. Oh, yeah, that. You know I'm really beating up on the beat. No Rocky, trying to skate on thin ice with a bitch. No hockey, bottoms up to the sky, got that drink. No walkie, she say I think I'm big in her heart. Too cocky, make a nigga body shake. Uh, yeah. No socket, no, I got a best friend in my pocket. No rocket, taking out to the sky with this shit. Can't stop it, if I wanna pop my shit, stupid bitch, I'ma pop it. Uh, stupid ass bitch, you know I always do my big one. Cold as with the flows, it's like I'm sipping on some free, uh. Stepping on these bitches underneath me, cause I'm beyond. Better watch a mocker, bitch, you don't know what I be on. Hating ass bitch. Never thought that I would be on Begging that bitch Like Felicia better be gone Nigga with no money I just tell him Leave me alone If you thought that you Were gonna ever Leave me on Man, I mean, hey, you, hey, you went real, hey, hey, you went real, 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 real. You got real in the mode. I didn't know if I was going to, have to try to grab my pistol. I didn't try to get me. I thought we was into it with somebody. Yeah. Now that sounds good. Shit. I yeah. talk about shit. Yo, so you know, the one thing I can say, man, is. It's just it feel good to see y'all come together like this, man. Cause you know, you know, our unity is more powerful than an atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. So we just gotta unify, and this and there's power in numbers. You know that. Yeah. So you you know I think I think that's live, man. So what's the, what what's what's the first we we all we in the we in March? Is it twelve yet? Cause you know we did have a twenty ninth today. Oh yeah we. Yeah yeah, yeah. you're gonna be it's gone for four years. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but then, I but somebody was lying about that. When they no, 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 no. It's gonna be gone. 29th, 
Yeah, but think about that for a minute. Once you um once you you do your thing like for the first quarter, what's going on in the second quarter? What's about to happen? What 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 are we doing with HHL? I hear the chant, it sound good. Man, like like so what what's what are what's we doing next? the first yeah, for the first quarter? Okay, so I'm a you know, business is Latin. You know what I'm saying? So a lot for of the people, second quarter. A lot of people don't understand how business really operate. Like, you know, when you look at uh, sustainability, right, in a company, you know, you have to be able to uh, generate enough interest in that company where people would be willing to put seed money and eventually from seed money to venture capital, from venture capital to angel capital, ultimately a, a IPO, which is an initial public offering. So we move in that capacity. So we have the HHF Awards, we have the HHF Magazine, we have the HHF Radio, we have HHF Social Media. You know, we have a lot of things, HHF Clothing, HHF Films. You know, we we, we, we produce in Boosie Film, Ice-T Film, and uh, Rick Ross Film. So that's what's up next, you know what I'm saying? We we just got to deal with Homestead, so we're putting some major projects out. Now, which Rick Ross is it? Freeway? Freeway. Okay. So, so, I'll make sure. so that being said, right, uh, you know, we're developing a situation where, in the case of cash money, when they was working with uh, Wendy Day, and they was able to get $30 million because of the work that they did, the proof of concept, the prototype, right? So that's what we, we, we're in the process of doing, showing the world that we are self-contained and we got sustainability, right? Mm, mm. And uh, so, like, the company's already got a valuation of some millions. If you Google Pimp and Ken, you look at my net worth, it's going to say $16 million. Not because I actually have $16 million, but because of all the things that we accumulated and acquisitions that we acquired through the hip-hop fraternity, right? Now, you know, being on all these platforms, it raised the value of the name. The name actually is worth more than all of the companies up under itself. The holding company is worth more than the subsidiaries, right? But also, you know, building that brand and HHF being, you know, radio, TV, everything, it's all roads lead to HHF. So when we acquire somebody like Mike Fresh, you know, who already got 16 billion views, then that takes our valuation up a little more, right? So we we value at 16 million now. So, and you know, when, when you know, the people who watch the metrics and stuff like that, they see what we're doing with him, then they're gonna come with a higher valuation. So we don't want to under leverage ourselves. We don't want to over leverage ourselves, but when the time comes, we we'll leverage all of that accumulation of uh, you know a, a, a value into a, a, a profitable situation where we'll be actually able to get maybe a hundred million, two hundred million, you know. And, and 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 they don't understand this because this is business. You know, a lot of people don't understand this, but of course, you know me. I deal with corporate America all the time. You know, what I'm saying a lot of those liquor deals, a lot of those book deals. Is I'm the man behind it. So me understanding Latin. You know, which is not regular. I'll give you an example. If you went to the court and you said, Hey, my name is E, CEO, and I represent myself, the lawyer, the judge is gonna say either you got a client for a fool or you got a lawyer for a fool, because in law they speak Latin, so I represent myself pro se. Pro se means you represent yourself, but you have to use the proper terminology and they can't give you legal advice. Well in business, you know, a lot of people say, I'll give you an example, I got a limited liability. You hear people, I got I'm limited, I'm limited. Well, actually, that's a bad thing when you're dealing with scale, when you're dealing with big business, because if I seen a pretty girl, we use uh, my sister over here. If we see uh, Emerald and she got beautiful eyes, nice look, nice body, and you know, everything, you know, a vagina, all that, and she say, E, I want to deal with you, but you can't get no vagina, you can't kiss me or nothing. She's limited. Well, that's how the banks look at it. So I try to tell brothers, you know, Latin, you know, you want to see corporation or S corporation because it, it, it's a different flavor with the business. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So if, you, if you're a C corporation and you get what they call, uh, uh, you could buy companies actually, like you buy trade lines, you could buy companies, chef companies that have been in the business for years, somebody that incorporated, but they do nothing with you, but you could buy it, and that's what the bank look at history. So if you don't understand all these uh, me mechanics and you understand the machinations of business, and you understand how to scale business to the next level, then you just out here like, hey man, I got an LLC, I got my own record label, I got my own this, I got my own that. Well. In any business, you got to have what they call diversification and uh, 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 upward, uh, uh, upward um, 
uh, uh, vert- vertication. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to. It's, it's not coming out right. But uh, the word I know it. Like I say it all the time. But it's got to be. Uh, definitely. Di- let's just start with diversification. So diversification is when you have, uh, you know, all these different entities connected to the hip hop fraternity, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, you look at any uh, race of people that's really winning. That's exactly what they have. They have diversification. You see what I'm saying? So that's what that's that's what you see. You see us, you know, mounting and building our sustainability and building our, uh, our assets as as a company. So when uh, when people look at the, uh, I thought you said can't nobody be on the phone. <laughs> Listen, man, you ain't gonna be on the phone doing my interview, man. What's that, <laughs> man? It's boss talk, man. We don't do that, man. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I gotta listen to you though. Know, I was just basically. People be calling me trying to get on this show, and and I have to tell them, you know, don't come up here and stuff like oh, that. No, no, don't come up, don't come up here. Why I'm up here? But don't not, come up here. But, but 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 see, that's what you see. We're creating a prototype for the business, right? And when you get assets like you know, uh, Emro and Cash and my son and Mike, you know, what I'm saying it's easy for us to do what we have to do. How many members do you guys have in HHL? We have a, con- a collective ten thousand members, and we we count our members by what we call emails. So I have ten thousand emails that has been uh, through our portals or joined on our uh, uh, on our national site, thehiphopfraternity.com. dot com, because you know we have a policy. You know, his hip hop. If you love hip hop, you can be a part of the hip hop fraternity. Wow. So. What do you guys stand to do? Like, you already had your brand. You you did Bounce When She Walked. You know, you did uh, dope songs. You, you, you've been a lyricist. You got hit songs, songs that everybody, like he just said, Ken just said, they, they you know, sing your song back to you. What's going to be different now that you join HHL? I'm going to be able to use his resources. I ain't never really had no help, like had too much help doing what I do. Now I got a team of people behind me. I'm able to use his connections. He introduced me to T.I. when I came out there. He um, put me on Ugly Money. I was on Beehive. I wasn't doing all this as Mike Fresh. Everything, I was just standing behind my own name, creating my way. Now I get like cosigns and being able to get introduced with people, being able to be on these podcasts, like stuff like that. That's hard. That's hard. And and what about you? You you I know you was doing your own independent movement at first. Like, what do you stand to gain in doing it this way? How do what do you want to do to leverage? Um, definitely like get my face out there a lot more because like you know we talked about how a lot of artists like you know their songs, you know they some people go to shows, collect their energy, and they don't know exactly who they are as a person, and like they don't see their face a lot, or they can't put a face with a name or the face with the song. Like, so I definitely want to like have my face and my name out there a lot more. Wow. That's hard. Like, what about and, and you? You grandfathered in pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I was like one of the first artists. You know what I'm saying? And I'm working with Ken. It, you know, when you work with a boss, you turn into a boss. You know what I'm saying? A boss of all bosses. So, you know, I'm sort of like a HHF A and R for real because I I hear a lot of the new music out here. I connect to a lot of the artists, young and old. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of people that's in my inbox, so they calling me, man, can you listen to this? Can you listen to this? Can you let Ken hear this song, this song, this pimp song I got? They want him to hear it bad, you know? And I'm one of them persons. I know what's going on around the world. I'll be checking you out. I might send it to Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm one of them. So I'm a, I'm a team player, and I'm so unselfish, you know what I'm saying? So, like, for us to have Mike on the team, other artists probably wouldn't want other artists to take they shine but i know that we're gonna prosper you know what i'm saying with him on the team wow yeah. uh, that, that, and and that's that's what it's all about believing in each other well you know i got to tell you uh man he had me on the phone universal they interested in signing me stuff like that bro wow like, just that fast yeah, it that ain't was... been two weeks since we even known each other but i just went to atlanta last week got to hit all these podcasts and introduce me to tip Got me on the phone with Universal. We talking about going to the White House. There's so much stuff being done already. So, wow, that's why you and, got, and like, I, but I want, you I want to say something. Changed, uh, I want to say something. You know, like you know, it wasn't like th- that these things weren't happening. You know what I'm saying? E, we was already trying. You know, you see, we was pushing people all the time. Of course, but see, the, the the issue is with a lot of artists, right? 
when they get a celebrity manager like myself, somebody that's well known and well respected, and we go on the podcast or something, and they see the, the interviewer might be interested in talking to me, they think that it might be like I'm trying to outshine them. And in reality, you know, that's something that's out of my control. You know, I cannot tell an interview who what questions to ask. If I bring you to the interview, then you know that's what. And then that's a lot of that's what a lot of things that happened in the past. A lot of the guys, you know, they don't realize how big I really am. They don't know that I got about 15 plaques with some of the biggest artists. I mean, 50 Cent, Nelly, Too Short, you know, uh, Little John. You know, I'm actually a Uncle Pimpin' in the in the rap game. You know, and they don't realize that because I'm so down to earth and they don't realize, but that's also their value because I don't rap and I don't act. Ooh, so we're not ooh. we're not competitors. But a lot of artists that we didn't had in the past, they thought that it was a competition thing, but it really was a collaborative thing. You know, and that's where, you know, me and Mike kind of go cool together because he, he don't need to, you know, compete with me for fame. He already fame. He don't need he already done that. Our relationship is based on business, and that's what HHF was missing. But you know, everything that we given H uh, given Mike Fresh, we gave to you know, we had Richie Rich on Drink Champs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They did six million, so six almost seven million. So we 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 have the the ability to get artists on these platforms, but the artists have to match my rhythm now. So he's the first artist, and you might not even notice that I actually signed on paper. I didn't sign anyone else because, you know, I always say the thing, because I'm Pippa Ken, every nigga think I got so much game, then my game is no game. So I don't run no game. So look, man, it's like it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm going to give you all this for free. You can run and do some sucker shit. You can be a buster. And once I see that busting you, that sucking you, I'm, I'm never going to forget it. You know, it's like I tell people all the time. And uh, I, I told Mike this, I told Emma this, and I tell a lot of people this, you know, in the alphabet, you got A, B, C, and you got X, Y, Z. Those are characters. You know, in, in the numerical system, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero is nothing until you go back to get the one and put the one on the zero to make it 10, and it becomes a character. They never change. Since you was born, since I was born, those characters never change. So those are principles, right? Mm -hmm. And so individuals, people in life, what they need to do, they need to establish principles and forever live accordingly. If you tell me that I might do this, or I might do that, or I think I'm gonna do that, that's not your, That's not a man of character. You don't have principles because you unstable. You know, one minute you will, one minute you will not, one minute you don't know whether you will or you will not. That's not principles, that's not stability. So, you know, that's one of the things that we have to have. It's character, I always say that your gift will take you where your character can't go. In other words, you can take the nigga out together, but you can't, can't take the nigga out, yeah. you know, you can't take can't the, the, nigga, the, the nigga. ghetto out the nigga. So that's what we're looking for at the hip hop term. We're looking for people who got principles and character. They say what they mean and mean what they say. And Mike, wow. you know, he's one of them type of dudes. Um, your artist here is a young lady, uh, your name is Emerald? Emerald Envy. Emerald Envy. Um, you know, I don't know if you got a, what is this on your face? You got a little Christian Rock stuff going or what? I mean, what's what's that tag? What's going on? What is that tattoo? Nothing. You don't want to talk about it. That's that Christian rock. It's it's going through the. It's waving nah, through all our people, all our young people, huh? It's an artist. I was dating somebody. Wow, that's that Christian rock. It's going through. I felt it. I could feel it in the. Emily you know, Chapel just feel. got her tattoo yeah. on his face. Yeah, I don't know if that's real, but he damn sure got it. Something on there showing that he might do it. I'm going I might do it, you yeah, know. That's crazy. But the one thing about it, that's the phases. We it, we say it's crazy, right, Ken? But it, it was crazy when niggas was wearing bell bottoms and Tom Walkers. Now they call them the, the bell bottoms. Uh, what they call them? The the the, the uh, you got some what, what kind some of bell bottoms stack on pants? Now. Huh? Oh, stack stack pants. Stacks. Yeah. They call them stacks. Yeah, she got some, but on it's there. really bell bottoms. Same thing. But but I'm just saying, like you got to realize the times change. People gonna look different, you, you, and we gonna say they crazy as hell. But then everybody gonna ride with it. So y'all getting tattoos? We didn't know niggas was getting tattoos all their whole damn body. I was I had left the gun play on here last last week up in L. A. Everything tatted, tatted to the game. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was crazy when them young niggas was doing that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the phases that these people go through. You've seen this before. You know, the word of God say ain't nothing new under the sun. Man, I've been in the clubs in Atlanta and they letting people in there with masks on. I'm a, 
Yeah, like, yeah. Like, dude, I don't want you close to me with no mask. Mask on. Oh, no, you will. I come from the streets. The mask shit, man, you're going to rob, you're going to do something to somebody. You got something sneaky going on about you. So it's just like today's world, the mask and the bag. It started with that COVID shit. Everybody carrying the bag. I be wondering what the oh. hell in that bag. Oh, oh, that thing. Yeah, they got the thing. Got that thing. Got that pop, pop, pop. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, she got that thing on. You know what I'm saying? You got something that'll clap back. No, they call it a book bag, man. A hey. book bag, huh? Hey, did oh, you know? You, you you knew that he was a mystical cousin, right? I knew he was mystical cousin. We talked about it. How's mystical doing? Have you heard from him since he's been locked up? Yeah, I heard from him. Is he is he coming home or he's still waiting? He's still waiting. Hadn't been sentenced to nothing. Nah. Okay. And that's good. So, so like, the thing about it, Ken told a story on here. Ken told a story of how it was something about some jury being taken, right? Yeah, well, so, uh, he, you know, you want to talk to him? Or he, no, to you the one had to, you so, had to do, so, you so the one got what, what, the relationship, Misk was my man, you know? So, you know, we did a song. What's that song with Lil John Misko did when they were in the club? I don't give up. I don't if you don't do, 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 so, so that's when we got close. Uh at the well, little big job. Truck no, I don't give a fuck. Big truck ground was doing Okay. okay. Dun, dun, dun. That song. Come on, man. You what he said, my mom ain't married. I'm big a bad truck driver. No, 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 that ain't the one. That ain't the one. Don't give me no other shit, man. Don't put that connect me to that bullshit. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, but uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, that big truck driver. Hey, oh, that's my so, favorite so, song. So, I know which one y'all talking about. Yeah, so, so, so <laughs> when he told me he was mystical cousin, I said, man, you know, uh, mystical had a hundred something thousand off a jury. And he got caught slipping and they took the jury. So when they took the jury from him, you know what I'm saying, me, they called the town. He called me. He said, say, man, these people from your town, they got me. So I had I made a phone call and I made a phone call within twenty four hours I had this jury back. Hundred thousand dollars for jury. And you know, these is my guys, you know, these some straight killers too, you know what I'm saying? The guys that had it. They, anybody know what twenty eight and twenty seven Atkinson is know who I'm talking about. You know, so they don't play right, but you know what I'm saying? Over the years, you know, I did a lot of time in the penitentiary, so I established myself in the town. You know, and then you know I'm from the east side, so my brother J D, you know what I'm saying, you heard him on on Pip Ali say I'm game affiliated, so you can do the math. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's all family, you know, but you know, we we had that plug where we could just say, hey, man, I need that back. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so we got it back. He came and got it back. He left fifty thousand in the car, my brother Marvin car. I said, you slipping again. So my brother had to bring the car and give him the fifty thousand. Damn. But you know, Mystico bought like twenty bottles of Moat, you know what I'm saying? He 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 celebrated. He and he was just so happy, man. You know, I mean hundred just imagine having your Rolex and all your jewelry stolen and getting it back. You know, because he would have had to pay a lot of money to get that jury back. So we got the jury back for him, you know, and that's what connected me to him. I said, man, you know, me and your uncle, cool. And then I was telling him about BG. I said, BG, you know, he promoted my book. And then he said, my mama know BG. I let him tell you about that story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I done rode in the car with BG in this Dodge Magnum before. Shit, BG was at the crib in the living room before. Shit, I was at the uh, bling, bling Bling video shoot, the baller block and movie set. We was at the mall one time. They had like 100 girls on a tour bus. I was little. I had to go in there to go pee. And I just went on there and stayed on there. I was sitting on there talking to the girls and stuff. Like an hour later, my mama and BG and them come get me off the bus. But like, I was around them when I was young, for sure. Wow. That's heavy because, you know, being from New Orleans, man, like you ran, you've you seen a lot of things happen. For you sure. know what I mean? For sure. And I think that I love New Orleans. You know, I'll be down there. I got to go down there this year. For sure. I love going down there and setting up doing the interviews. You know, when he was surprised, I knew all the streets because I used to stay on, uh, I stay on Veteran Boulevard. Boulevard in uh, Kenner, uh, in Kenner, Louisiana. So you know, I was telling him, I said, I even told him, I said, you know, Little Wayne, we gave, I gave Little Wayne his first shot of real pussy, you know, bad bitch. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I hooked him up with him and baby, both of them. You know what I'm saying? Me and and you know, a uh, uh, Turk, uh, Turk, you know, uh, uh, BG Juvenile. They all tell him, baby used to sit out in the hallway with me at the hotels, and we just talk for hours. He wanted the pimp game so bad. He tried to knock one of my bitches. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, what? Man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because she had my name tattooed on, tattooed on her titty. So baby told her, hey, if you 
take that and put cash money, I'll give you X amount of dollars. So I told her, I said, get the money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can get another tattoo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, go on, get the money if the nigga want to give it. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, me and Baby, man, we've been cool. But how I met Baby, it's some players named Tim and Terrell. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they all them cars, them them Ferraris you seen in that first video, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was they that was their videos. Mm. That was their cars. So them brothers, you know what I'm saying, they gave me thirty thousand back when Pimps Up Holds first came down and was an explosion. And so they gave me thirty thousand to be with them for a week. And a part of that was we did a concert with Jay Z and Cash Money at the Atrium. Actually where we having our award show on April seventh. So it was almost like a a reunion, right? Fine. So they paid us all that money. To do the uh, to do the uh, you know the uh, the uh, party and then they wanted me to go to New Orleans so I went to New Orleans I went to Baby now office and you know Baby said man I ain't never met a real pimp you know Damn. and at that time you know a lot of people don't know the reason why a lot of artists you know you know even his uncle is his, his cousin 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 Mystico you know you know the, the, the uh, porn star Capri Capri Styles yeah well that should be my bitch I brought her to the game wow that bitch got a pussy she got locks in her pussy. Misco fucked that bitch. He went crazy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, also, you remember 50 Cent said, Pippi Ken said, who kid to pay for a bitch? That's the same bitch. Uh, I hook who who kid up with the bitch. So a lot of niggas didn't know why them niggas was fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I was getting money on the low. You know what I'm saying? I was a part of those record budgets back then. Wow, <laughs> you know what, wow, what I'm saying? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but the New Orleans connection was me and my man. And I said, bro, I know where, uh, I know where uh, Club uh, Ramport and uh, off of... Uh, we just got the name of streets and Canal Streets, the Bourbon, I mean, uh, Bourbon, you know, uh, French Quarter and all that, you know, and that's how, you know, we found out, oh, we got more in common than we don't. Wow, that's crazy, man. Like, the one thing I do know that the universe will connect people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They'll put everybody, everything together, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, when, when did you, did you, did you know what we just said, Mike? Let, I mean, uh, either, let it breathe. He said, to HHF management. He's the biggest thing since the toothbrush, since Listerine. This man is the man. 16 billion views. Wow. That's big for HHF. Can I get a clap? Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, that's big. That's big shit, man. That's big. That's so huge. You imagine what's going to happen with HHF. And then we got Emerald and Cash and Supreme. Man, I got four of the coldest motherfuckers on the planet right now. Wow, that's hard. Do they, do they work together? Like, yeah, they put, we finna go to the studio. Uh, Bash, who's our CEO, he runs the hip hop fraternity in Dallas. You know, we finna go to his house right after we leave you. He live actually five minutes from you. Wow, that's crazy. That's gonna be hard. I, I'd love to hear the music once everybody put it all together. Man, it's gonna be lovely. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let, let me. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out to you? Um, by email. Turn that, turn that mic for me. Speaking to the mic. By email or social media. My email is emerald.envy with two Y's at gmail.com. And then y'all can follow me on all social media platforms at emerald underscore envy with two Y's. Wow. Hey, uh, follow me on IG at jetboycats underscore 19. Make sure you go get brick by brick. And go to www.hiphopfraternity.com. Follow me on there as a friend, too. Wow. Make sure y'all vote for me. Bow, 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 bow. M Y K Fresh on everything. M Y K F R E S H. Type it in. Bow, bow. <laughs> and y'all can find me at the H H F Awards. H H F. April seventh. H H F. At the atrium. H H F. H H F. It's going down. Bow, bow, and uh, bow, bow. if you want, if you want to book any one of these artists, you know, you can hit me up at four zero four seven nine zero ninety six twenty seven. Oh, we got a special right now. You know what I'm saying? So you can get. Four for one, Ooh, you know. I got mean, the four for hey, one. Hey, yeah, because because you know Mike is the headliner. So if you know you book Mike, then you're gonna get the team. So you yeah. know what I'm saying. So it's four for one, and you know we ain't cheap neither. So you know let's make that clear. And uh, second of all, you know if you want uh, to go hear me spit some of the game that I spit on here, you can go to my podcast at Pimp and Ken. Pimp and channel. Ken. And you can follow me at Real Pimp Ken underscore on uh, IG. And my books are also available. My books are available at audible.com. Type in my name, Pimp and Ken, and you get Pimp Audible for your loss again. And you can catch me every Wednesday on Trigger Alert. I wanted to co host with Ugly Money, and we just be talking. It's, if you're a red pill brother, you know what I'm talking about. Wow. Just and I got a new game. twerk record coming out with Bound and Mac, too. Hey! That. Man, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 with a Boss's Talk. 